Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. Today we're talking about feudality, which you may not have heard of because it's a Z-Man game and half the time you don't hear about Z-Man games. But you may have heard of the designer Tom Wham and Tom Wham designed Kings and Things and you can see the distinctive artwork on the box. Wham! Even though, even though they try to make it look like Oren Labora, you know, like... Wow, they really did. Look at that. <laughs> it's, it looks like this Woo! is the next in the series of <laughs> high quality, high class, deeply strategic games. It's not. <laughs> and yet, and, and really we got to start by saying that because this isn't a high class, high strategic game. I'm not saying it's a bad game, nope. but it's, we're talking a game on the level of Settlers of Catan. It's very simple. Roll dice Ooh. to get resources. I would say this is not even that far up as far as complexity is concerned. Well, maybe. Well, let's check it out. In the game of feudality, you each get your own little feudal area. And the areas are all different looking. They're basically just variations on a theme where you have different mountains and a river running through it. So you get yours. And if you see at the bottom here, you have different kinds of resources. You have... You have ore, you have food, you have wood, you have metal, you have coins, and the game actually comes with, you see there's cubes if you have one of those resources, if you, these are, these, there's a token for each type that's shaped differently, that's three of that particular resource. Each person gets a forest, which they can pretty much put wherever they want, and then you also are going to get a keep that you're going to put somewhere in your kingdom and then you're going to put a tower in that keep and then at the top here you're going to put a fort a castle and a fortress and then the game is ready to go now the way a turn works is very simple on a turn one person when it's one one person is the senior player so they get the shield to show that they're the senior player and they're going to roll a die and then you're going to look at the, the, the two dice that they roll and so for example here they rolled a blue one and a white eight so everyone takes their pawn and goes to the blue one and white eight and puts it there. And every spot that is next to that is eligible. You're, you can pick one of those to produce resources. So let's say I had rolled a five, five. I would put it here and it would be next to the forest. And if I look at that forest, I'll see that that forest gives me two wood. If I had put it here next to the tower, if it had landed next to the tower for some reason, I would get one victory point. Uh, if you ever roll doubles, like I did with a 5-5 five five, uh, here, if I ever roll doubles, you roll again. And if you ever roll into the 8 column, you can't put anything in the 8 column, although it can be next to something else, then I get to roll again for that also. And so you can roll again multiple times. After everyone's done rolling the dice, then you'll draw an event card. Now these event cards can be, all sorts of things can happen. The king declares war, the king decrees a new tax, the king is counting his money. Usually there's something to do with the king. Not always. Sometimes there's bandits attacking, there's a black dragon attack, so different things. But usually the king wants money, so everyone deals with that event. Then we're going to have a purchase phase. And what's going to happen is, up here, the player who's the senior player is going to draw from a bag of tiles and they're going to put there two times the number of players tiles that are in the game and then each player is going to get the chance to go around the table I mean going around a table to buy one of these items when you buy them each of these items has a cost and so if you look there for example you'll see that man at, man at arms has a cost of one metal while the mason has a cost of one stone the merchant has a cost of one uh, gold. Right here you can see the Kirk here has a cost of two ore and one wood. So after each person buys it, you'll then take what you bought and you will put it somewhere in your kingdom. Now sometimes they have a very specific spot on where they have to go, but other than that it doesn't really matter. Now some people, anyone who produces food, this farmer here, you can see that he produces one food, but there's a little blue plus one. That means if you put that man on a river, he'll produce an extra food. 
After that happens, then the person whose turn it is takes two baronal actions. What that means is they can pick any two areas on their board and they can produce with those. They also uh, can take one of these special actions. They can try to have a secret liaison with the, the king or queen. They just basically roll dice to see if they get a victory point or not. They can try to sabotage someone else's kingdom, again, rolling dice. They can attack, they can attack a specific person or they can attack, uh, they can attack uh, specified kingdoms and they can get points that way. Points are kept up here, by the way. And one of the main ways to get points is to upgrade your tower to a fort, then a castle, then a fortress. And you can see the fortress has four points on it, so anytime you, the dice are rolled next to that. But there's plenty of people. I'm just going to show you an example here of several of the different tiles that are involved in a game. You can see there that a wizard gives you a point, a cleric gives you a point, and can also heal people. The, the cooper gives you a point, the smith gives you a point. The trader lets you trade three for one goods. The alchemist gives you four gold. The, so you, the, there's different things, and there's also different warriors. These will add to your rolls when you attack, and warriors all have to be placed into your castle when you get them. There's spots for the different warriors that you have. And then it goes to the next person, and we continue on until someone gets a certain amount of points that they need to win. As time goes by, you're going to have more and more places here. So as you roll the dice, you're going to have more and more choices of where to pick. Some of these tiles have restrictions on where they're placed. But once they're placed on the board, then they're going to produce as long as you roll dice that are kind of next to them. Obviously, that means if you're put in the one column, that's probably the worst place to be. Because if, like for example, if you're in a 1-3, there is no zero that's going to be rolled that's next to it. But there's different, like I said, it's all about probability, where to place people, and eventually someone's going to win by having the most points. Initially, there's a lot of good things like about this game. I love the artwork. I love the components. I like how the different resources, the three piece of each resource was a different shape. And that gives some texture to yeah. collecting coins, collecting money. Mm -hmm. the, uh, I, the thing about the game that I enjoyed the most was the rolling for resources. I like that concept of having that eight by eight grid rolling and then getting your resource for if it's something touching the spot that's rolled. That's a neat concept, and I wonder if a more serious game could be put on top of that. Hmm. Because that is the most strategy in the game, I think, is putting that out there. Can you really say strategy, though, since well, it's based, tactics, on, I guess. based on luck? But what I'm saying is there's nothing else beyond that. The cards that you draw during the course of the game are going to wildly swing things. When you attack or whatever you decide to do, you're rolling dice. This is another game where you have to feed your people, although I'll say this is the <laughs> least the least pressing version of that I've ever played. Yeah, I guess so. I never sat around going, oh, where is food going to come from? But you do have to be careful with your resources. There at the end of the game, our resources were actually pretty tight. Um, we all had lower resources than we began. You begin the game, because you have fewer tiles on the board, you begin the game, you get a lot of resources early off, and you don't really spend a whole lot of them. But once you get more tiles on the board, you're having to feed more people, you're having to, uh, uh, you know, the tiles get more expensive as they come out, and that type of thing. So you're using your resources. I'd be, not, not, not that it's the linchpin of the entire game, but you do need to be careful. I'll tell you this, though. I'm not sure that the different resources differentiated themselves enough for me. No, they didn't. The food, yes, you have to feed your people. But other than that, what's the difference between iron and wood? Well, you use wood to build some stuff and iron to build other stuff, but I didn't feel different. Mm -mm. It was more like, oh, I turn over some tiles. That's the resource I need. I have it or I don't. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it wasn't like, I'm saving up iron for that whatever. Yeah. I got, well, I guess maybe you, you could think that way, but... Gold felt, gold felt different. Uh, you could use gold for a number of different things. Um, well, at least I could with the trader, with the yeah. trader, with the trader tile because I there's a trader tile that lets you trade in three of any one resource for one any one of another. So um, I was using my gold production to do that. So that made it feel better for me, I guess. Um, he mentioned the sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. He mentioned the cards earlier, and and uh, that's one of the things that I actually liked. I thought it brought the concept of the game, the theme of the game, together a little bit more because it's you're living in feudal times and stuff like that, and there are cards that say, well, the king is going off to fight, so you have to send your army away, and I, I just thought that was kind of cool uh, that they worked in the whole idea of feudalism into a game called Feud Feudality, and see, see how that works. But uh, anyway... They should have called it Vassals. Uh, 
S S A L. Yeah, yeah, that that's what I meant. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, here's the deal though. I I'm not sure if I want to keep this game or get this game because it's it's light. Yeah. It's a very it's a it's a light game and no one is going to want to play this. The, the box says 60 to 90 minutes. It's probably closer to 60 than it is to 90. Right. But if it went any longer, I think I'd dislike it. Mm. Because when, when you're done with it, I doubt that the winner is going to say, yes, yes, that is why I won. Thanks to my superior planning and tactics. Oh, yeah. I, I don't think that's going to happen because there's so much luck. That's not to say that it's not enjoyable. I'm just not sure that there's not already a lot of these enjoyable games out there. Well, I think this will appeal to Settlers fans. Yeah, it will. I think it will. I, I mean, it's not completely disjointed from Settlers. I'm not saying that. But um, I don't know. I just think it's a lot light, more lighthearted than Settlers was intended to be, or maybe now is. Um, the thing about this is that um, I, I, I actually enjoyed it. Um, the only kind of catch at it is that whole 8x8 grid thing that he really likes. That's and, one thing you don't like? Well, it's not that I don't like it. I just think that it's it's a little... I don't know. It, it, it's it's too random. Unless you're a person like you that can look at an 8x8 grid and see the probabilities. Well, right off the bat, you're kind of... It, it's like a shot in the dark with every time... Every well, time that's you true, it. and you don't know what someone's going to roll either. Exactly. I can't say, oh, the seven row. That's going to be rolled a lot because I... Yeah. If, if it was a card deck and certain cards came up, maybe you could say, okay, right. I haven't seen too many seven cards come up, so I'm going right. to put stuff in that row. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, so, I mean, he, by the end of the game, he was all like, you know, there are seven combinations that don't get me something. <laughs> I was like, really? You actually figured that out. So, whatever. It's, I, I enjoy playing the game. It's not a mechanic that I'm going to say, please make more games like this, but um, I enjoyed it for what it was. I thought it was somewhat unique, too. Yeah. I, I think it's going to appeal to folks who like lighter games, like Settlers of Time, if you like that idea of getting resources. There's not as much interaction of trading, but you can attack each other, too. Yeah. And some people might not, not like that, but you can not attack other players. Right. You don't have to. Which is what we should have done. We should have attacked Tom, really, well, honestly. But well, that's kind of a didn't. rule for all your games, right? Yes. But all we right. didn't. I tried to be nice. And so I'm going to give this feudality, I'm going to give it one eight-sided die up. And that's about the highest I would ever go with it, I think. I don't think, I don't think playing it multiple times would change it. So. Okay. One thumb up or eight-sided die up. I'm going to give it uh, two... Thumbs down! Surprise, everybody! No, I'm not going to give it two thumbs down. <laughs> well, you already said two. I'm going to give it one and a half grubby pinkies up. And the reason I do that is because it's feudal time, so your hands are going to be dirty. And I don't want to exert the effort to bring my big meaty thumbs up, so I'm just going to put my pinkies up there and say it's... <laughs> It's okay for what it is. Woohoo! Stunning endorsement. <laughs> I would I would normally play it if other people want to play it, but that's true. That, I don't. This, I, I'm not going to ask for it. This meets my description of will play if asked, but probably wouldn't suggest on his own. Right. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com.